Hello everyone, my name is Espio the Chameleon, and today I will be reading you all chapter 17 of The Berenstain Bears and Left for Dead 2, the Berenstain Bears and Left for Dead crossover fanfiction, written by our good friend, the Queen of Lions. Queen of Lions, thank you very much for giving us permission to read your stories like this one. Now this is a sequel to the original Berenstain Bears and Left for Dead crossover fanfiction, which we read a few months ago. And I decided to give chapter 17 a reading since my girlfriend Katrina read the 13th chapter. And uh, she introduced me to this fan fiction and I decided to read chapter 17. Well, without further ado everyone, let's get reading. Zoe was the first one to be woken up by Ellie who was shaking her lightly. It's time to wake up, Zoe. We have a busy day ahead of us. Ellie softly said as Zoe opened her eyes and looked at Ellie. Morning, Ellie. What time is it? Zoe asked. It's 7 a.m., Zoe. It's the sunrise, Ellie said, as she quietly opened the safe room door. Zoe can tell that coach was already up. I've already shot down the wandering zombies, so it should be safe for you girls to go get something for breakfast for all of us to eat. Coach replied as Zoe and Ellie walked around the swampy area. It's quiet, very quiet, Zoe said to Ellie. I wonder if there'll be anyone to help us. There's a plantation house, Ellie pointed out, as Zoe saw the forest that has a plantation house. That's amazing. I wonder if there's a boat or something, Zoe asked her. Coach already checked out this place. There's a boat at the docks, through the gate of the plantation house. He already cleared the place out while we were sleeping. I think this place is really cool. Ellie said as she found two baskets and two step ladders. She handed Zoe one of each, but Coach sadly said that no one is in the house. Either they became affected or they died, but who knows what happened. But at least after we have breakfast, we can all get moving without infected around. Ellie and Zoe started to pick the fresh fruit from the trees they were picking at. I do worry about Sister Bear. She hasn't been happy with since me and Ellie hooked Alice hooked up together, so he said to Ellie, I think she's jealous. I'm starting to think about that too, Zoe. Sister must not be liking you and Alice dating, but it is Alice, but it's your and Alice's relationship with each other. No one should ever control that. Ellie replied as she, she and Zoe collected fresh food, fruit. Let's get back to the group. They must be waking up by now, Zoe said, as she and Ellie were carrying their baskets of fruit in the safe house. I was thinking about staying here with Alice, like after I helped Sister Bear find brother and get them home. I'd like to stay this time. Really? It would be great if you stay here with Alice. You guys would be a great couple like you are now, but without the zombies, of course. Ellie laughed. As soon as the outbreak is over, I'll settle in with a new life with Alice. So he replied as two tall and his gang were hiding in a house, watching Ellie and Zoe walking toward the safe house. Why did you go to bear country after you handled Ritter Jones? Ellie asked Zoe. Well, after Burl died to save all of us, I went back to bear country with sister and her family because they've always looked up to me as a big sister. But I'm hoping my sister will understand. Zoe replied to Ellie's question. Sister will just learn, sister will just learn to accept those things, even if we don't like them, Ellie said. As they got back to the group, they showed everyone what's for breakfast. Fresh fruit. Me and Zoe picked them. They look great to eat, Alice said. What fruits are they? A mixture of fresh, fresh fruits. We can make a fruit salad, Ellie replied. A sister then pulled out some yogurt. We can have fruit with yogurt. There's a lot of it since Nick found them fresh, sister said. Nice idea, sister, Nick said. I'm starting to like her. Sounds like a great breakfast. I'm in, Rochelle replied, as the group began to dig in their breakfast. After that group finished their breakfast, they prepared themselves as they all left the safe room. Then they heard snickering and laughing. What in the world is screwing around? Coach asked. I think it's too tall in his gang. We should hide so they don't see us, Sister said, as the whole group ran inside the house. They were all on the they were they all were on the ground. Coach said he made a pit all for those three clowns. 
It did well when you were all asleep, Ellie said. Do you see any? Zoe asked Alice. As he was taking a peek to see two tall and his gang acting like fools. They're there, but they're acting like a bunch of a bunch of animals, Alice replied. As Coach was also taking a peek. They'll fall in a pit. They'll fall in the pit, Alice. Watch where they're standing, Coach replied. Two tall and and his gang were standing on around a pile of leaves. You're a jerk, Two Tall said a smirk. No, you are a super jerk, Smirk replied as a gang then fell straight into the pit. Soon everyone left at what they saw. Help, let us out of here, Two Tall called as Rochelle and Zoe both looked down at Two Tall and his gang. And we're in a pit. No can do, morons. Why don't you start being nice for a change, Zoe said as she walked away. You hear her. If you can't be nice, then buzz off and don't bother us anymore, Rochelle added as she also walked away after the group made it to the plantation house. They looked around. Is this the plantation house? Man, this is huge. Sadly, there is no one alive. I checked all over the place, Coach said as a spinner was running up the path to the plantation house as it passed by the survivors. Hey, it's a spinner, Ella shouted as Ellie made the kill on the spinner. Nice shot, Alice said to Ellie. Thanks, Ellie smiled as, as the group climbed up the stairs and they walked around the plantation house. There was no one affected. After looking around the inside of the house, they walked out of the house to find it. It was the front of it they were at. It was a hedge like a park with a gate. There's a radio. Maybe we can use it. Someone might respond to it and help us, Nick said, as the group prepared themselves. As they, and they walk, all walked down to the gate of the plantation house. Howdy, Alice resp responded to the radio. Hello, I can't believe I hear voices. Now I wonder where you guys are. Because if you tell me where you guys are, I can pick you up. A voice from the radio said, at the plantation house, Rochelle replied. All right, name's Virgil, and I'll be there in ten minutes, so hold up the hordes of zombies for as long as you can, Virgil said from the radio. A horde of infected began to attack the group as everyone was together. They all shot down the horde of infected. They also shot down two jockeys and a boomer. Then they had the tank attack them. They all brought down the tank, and it was too easy. Then the second horde of infected which the group was able to take down in the second horde of the infected, and they killed a charger along with the hunter and smoker. Then they had a second tank after them, attack them. They were all able to bring it down, which they were all able to take the tank down. Virgil's here, let's go, so we said, as the gate burst open, and the group all ran towards the boat, which was at the end of the docks. As soon as they got on the boat, Virgil, who was driving the boat, and got him moving and the group was safe. That was too close, Alice said. Yeah, that was, so we replied. Thanks for saving us, Virgil, Coach said. It was my pleasure, you guys. You're all trying to survive out here, Virgil said. Virgil replied as Sister and Zoe stood up. And this is where I will stop for part one. Stay tuned for part two of Espion the Chameleon Reads, chapter 17 of the Berenstain Bears and Left for Dead 2.